Hey guys, Winston at Carbide 3D here. Today I want to provide an overview of the Shape Oko 3's heavy duty Z axis optional upgrade and its installation. The HDZ, as it's known, is a drop in replacement for the stock Z axis on the Shape Oko 3. It replaces the belt drive and V wheels with a ball screw and linear rails, measurably improving overall rigidity. The torque multiplication of the ball screw also allows for use of heavier spindles, and there is a separate 80mm mount if you choose to exercise that option. The HTZ ships with most of the hardware required for installation, with the rest of the parts coming off your existing Shaboko. To start, you'll want to harvest the stepper motors, spindle mount, limit switches, and V-wheels from the stock XZ carriage assembly. For my sanity, I arranged all my parts based on what step they're for. First up, V-wheels. You can use the spares that come with the HDZ or reuse the ones you already have. It's a judgement call you have to make based on how abused your wheels are. Some people might prefer installing two wheels now, mounting the HDZ on the rails, and then installing the bottom two wheels. I personally like to install everything off the rail since I don't have easy access to the back of my machine. Next up, you'll want to install the idler bearings with spacers. These go on with longer M8 hardware to thread into the body of the HDZ. Step 3 is to attach your X-axis stepper motors on standoffs. Step 4 is to attach the Z-axis motor and limit switch. Step 5 is to affix your spindle mount to the Easy Tram plate and install those on the HDZ. Step 6 is to transfer your existing X-axis limit switch hardware to the HDZ. And the rest is just fitting your HDZ to the machine. The larger eccentric nuts give you very fine control over how tightly your V-wheels are pressed to the rail. I like getting them to the point where it's just a little difficult to stop the rotation of the wheels and get them to slip. Reroute your X-axis belt and then tram in your spindle, which on the HDZ is as easy as it gets. Use shim stock or aluminum foil under the easy tram plate to eliminate forward or backward tilt of the router and make it perpendicular to the Y axis. Then use the eccentric nuts on the easy tram plate to nudge the spindle to get it perfectly perpendicular to the X axis. Once it's perfect, lock in the orientation of the spindle by tightening the bottom screws. And that just about wraps it up for the physical installation but you also need to reflash the gerbil settings on the Shapeoko so it can use the HDZ. Open up the latest build of Carbide Motion, connect your machine, and go directly to settings. Do not press jog, do not home the machine. Tell Carbide Motion you're using the HDZ, transmit the new settings to the Shapeoko, and then you can finally use your HDZ. And let me tell you, this thing is a beast. It maintains depth of cut extremely well and really enables a new level of speed on the Shapeoko. Here, I'm gonna run a basic test to demonstrate. This is a test piece I machined with the stock Z-axis using my really aggressive high efficiency milling speeds and feeds. One of the pockets is machined with a depth of cut of 0.25 inches, the other is 0.3 inches. I left 15 thou of axial stock to leave and came back with a finishing pass on the floor. The finishing toolpath couldn't fully erase the evidence of the adaptive toolpath preceding it. This happens on the right side predominantly because that's where the end mill is re-engaging material first with each adaptive arc. There is an immense amount of shock load being delivered to the spindle. And in the 0.3 inch depth of cut test, you can see these machining marks are even more prevalent. But with the HDZ, we have a flawless floor on the quarter inch depth of cut test, and the same thing at a 5 16th inch depth of cut. The HDZ is able to maintain a depth of cut with much greater consistency. With all that being said though, if you aren't planning on pushing your machine really aggressively, you'll see limited benefit with the HDZ. This isn't something we're trying to upsell you on if you don't need it. There's nothing about the stock Z-axis that will prevent you from machining something if you set your mind to it. The HDZ will simply let you do it faster. If you're interested, the HDZ is available now in our store under the HD category, and we have more thorough installation documentation which I will link to in the description below. Good luck and have fun machining, folks.